two weeks ago, I bought an Orange County Chopper, which came with a trailer, a watch, and a boat for just $10,000. Possibly the worst financial decision of my life. You're going to see why soon. The problem is, after spending a day working on it, it's still not running. I ended up needing to replace a lot of parts on it because it sat for so long. The goal is to be the first person to actually ride this bike at speed and on the highway. But first, we need to get it running. Then, get it on the dyno to see if it's as powerful as everyone says it is. Then I will attempt to ride when I'm considering the most dangerous motorcycle I own and I pray that it stays together. And now we're going back to Dave's shop because he says he has an update for us. We're back over here at Dave's. Dave was kind of, you were working on it and you think you guys, you think we, this, this thing will run? I think we're gonna, we're gonna get it fired up right now. I, I don't foresee an issue with us getting it fired up whatsoever, man. All right, let's, uh, let's fire it up. Plug in the kill switch over there. Oh yeah. Here we go. And for the first time in who knows how long, we got it running. But there was a problem. We couldn't get it to idle lower than 3,700 RPM. And we need it running to try to solve the problem. But since it's air-cooled, if we keep it running here on the stand, it's going to overheat. So I guess the, uh, the next step is let's go, to, uh, let's go to the dyno. Yep. Tune it, see what kind of power this thing puts down, and then I'm going to ride it. And get your wife flowers. Get my wife some flowers. <laughs> you, you still gotta do that, dude. Yeah. So I know a lot of people are really angry about this motorcycle because it looks so cool, but it was never finished. And it was fitted with some amazing parts that a lot of you people would love to have on your own motorcycle. The 124 engine, the supercharger, the brake, you know, it's just really cool stuff. But it never got used. And here's where the disconnect is. You can say what you want about Paul Senior, but the fact is, he was smart. I mean, he was, he was really smart. Because what you might not get is, he was not a motorcycle builder. He was an entertainer. It seemed to me that when they started the show, they were building bikes for people, but not really people who actually rode motorcycles, like the ginormous Shaquille O'Neal bike. And they were doing that just to get the publicity from the big celebrity. And later, this is where it gets kind of interesting, is that you'll notice they, they pretty much only make motorcycles for businesses. Now, you, you might be asking, why, what does a business need with a motorcycle? What are the executives like sharing the bike? and? you know, borrowing it every other weekend? No. Businesses wanted them because it was an advertising expense. They thought, hey, I can spend $200,000. I get my name all over the Discovery Channel for this one episode and then this one build. And then we also get this bike that we can take around and show people and leave it in the lobby and people know that we, had, we did an Orange County Chopper build. So in a way, it was a win-win. It was a marketing and tax write-off for the business. And Orange County Chopper was making a bunch of money selling these motorcycles. But the story behind this OCC bike is slightly different. So we travel over to the Harley Davidson dealership to Bogart their dyno. Hold on a second, I need to do a tank strap plug. Tank straps, the only straps that I use when I'm transporting the Orange County Chopper. How you feeling, Dave? Great, man. Here's problem number one about this motorcycle and actual functionality of it. I'm, I'm about 6'2". To get, to be able to get your foot up here to grab that, it's very, it's very hard. There we go, all right. I should've been taking yoga classes for the past couple <laughs> years. You're doing it, we're almost there. So in classic Orange County Chopper fashion, we push the bike to its next destination, where hopefully we can get it running properly and then see how much horsepower it puts down. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Austin Powers. You can tell how awesome a bike is by how many 12-point turns you got to do to, to get anywhere. It's running now, but it's still not running the way we need it to be. But the only way for us to get it to the next level is to keep it running, look at the computer system, see what's going on while keeping it cool w with the dyno. Now, since the last video, a lot of people who actually were involved in building the bike contacted me, they reached out, and they gave me a little bit more insight on the actual bike. And, and a lot of these guys actually sent me pictures of how they were involved in the bike. You know, the, uh, the painter sent me a picture of the bike. Um, one of the guys that transported it sent me a picture. Um, he also sent me a picture of when the, when the Miss Geico trailer got wrecked, which I, don't, I have no idea whether the bike was in it or not. But I'm coming to realize that this, uh, this, the story of this bike is more of a tragedy. So, uh, if you've never been to a dyno, which probably most people have not been to a dyno, it's a, it's a big drum in the ground. 
they plug it in with, with computers and it'll tell you what kind of horsepower and torque it makes. So one, it's an insulated room because I don't want the whole place to be super loud, but it's very, very loud inside. It's also loud because they make it, they turn it into pretty much a big wind tunnel where they're throwing air from one side and sucking up it on the other side. So it's, you got the air and the wind, that makes it loud, but then the sound of the bike and being real close quarters with it with nowhere for the sound to go. So I'm, I'm getting smarter in my old age. I brought my muffs. This will hopefully keep my hearing. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my hearing aid. Dino day is always a great day. Unless, which is very, very possible, the engine grenades and blows up and, and the cameraman gets sh shrapnel in his leg. Very, extremely possible. Actually, most likely to happen. You guys know that I've been a huge supporter of GoPros for a long time. Like I, I had a GoPro 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I've had, I've had all of them and I've spent tons of money for them. So, but since the 8, I feel like they've really slacked off and I don't like the quality of their stuff anymore. Kind of drive me nuts because they have, they have a lot of overheating problems and a lot of goofy things that really have, have, have costed me money and I've lost footage with it. So I challenged myself to see if, is there, what else is out there? So I looked into Insta and Insta actually, um, with, their, with their 360 camera, it's a pretty cool camera, but they came up with an, with an action camera, the Ace Pro. This entire video, and the last video we did, the last bike with this was, was all filmed with the, uh, with the Ace Pro. Let's see, how, let's see how it works. So the bike started up great, now we need to get the engine warm before we do a pool. But then, we had a problem that no one expected. So here's the problem. Because this is, a normal suspension is supposed to be like this. This is raked out so much that when you really get on the throttle, it, it compresses the suspension in, which is taking this thing off the drum, which is basically taking the bike off the dyno. I mean, I don't think it's gonna push through that, but um, it's, we, gotta, we gotta fix it. I've lost tons of valuable footage from one of my GoPros overheating because when they overheat, they just shut off and it stops recording. What's cool about the Ace Pro is it just turns the screen off to help cool the system down, but it continues recording the entire time, which is great because uh, my, my footage is valuable to me. And then just when I thought that we had it all figured out, things took a turn for the worse. And when I say worse, I mean potentially catastrophic. So uh, what happened? <laughs> it, it overpressurized the oil and popped the oil cap oh. again the oh. second time. What's the uh? Your engine oil is right down there. That's oh. what that is. Your oil bag is right underneath, and they stuck the dipstick right. You know, because it makes sense to stick it right underneath the oh, starter. Yeah. So here's kind of a big problem. You need traction on your tires so you don't slide out. That's, you know, we all know that. Because when you slide out, you probably wreck. If the oil plug pops, it's gonna dump oil all over the ground, which means your tire's gonna run over it, which means your tire's covered in oil, which means you have no traction, which means your rear tire's basically on ice. If that happens on the highway, or going at anywhere at speed, 
I'm going to be in trouble. Which is once again ironic for a motorcycle that is built for an insurance company that insures motorcycles. This bike doesn't seem to be able to run for more than a few seconds at a time, but in classic bikes and beards fashion, the right person at the right time happens to randomly show up willing to help. This is Sammy. Sammy is a retired Harley Davidson tech and an expert in building and drag racing motorcycles, which means he has a very unique understanding of extremely heavily modified bikes like this one. When we told Sammy about our issue with the oil cap popping off, he knew just what to do. He suggested that it was overpressuring because it was overfilled. So we drained some of the oil out and hoped for the best. But we still needed to solve the high idle problem before I was able to ride this bike. Yeah! So the problem was the um, throttle position sensor, which is this. So if you look right there, it's a modern day, kind of modern day motorcycle where it uses computers. So it has to tell the computer where the throttle's at. So that tells everything else what's going on. This was falling down and it was giving it, it, was giving it the wrong reading. So that, that's what our high idle problem was, which does not sound like a problem that they would have had initially. So I'm wondering if when we plug that in, we're gonna see another series of problems. We'll see what happens. It's running out of gas. Yeah. Let me go so while we're pouring race fuel in the motorcycle, the other cool thing about the Insta Ace Pro is that you can get this GPS module that connects to the camera that gives you overlays while you're filming, which can show you elevation, speed, distance, acceleration, and route. Well, the first horsepower numbers that I heard of for this bike was 197 horsepower. That's insane. That's a, lot, that's a lot of power. You'd be hard pressed to find even heavily modified Harleys hitting over 150. So if it's anywhere close to that, mind blowing. But then I did a little bit more digging and I saw this article that claims this bike is a 300 horsepower custom motorcycle. A 300 horsepower chopper. That's insane. It's one thing to have a 300 horsepower motorcycle that you're that is comfortable to ride and it, but it's another thing to have a 300 horsepower chopper that you're like all put together holding it in the goofiest way and nothing about it is it's comfortable and the whole time you feel like you're falling off and all the controls feel completely foreign to you you know it's like uh, it's like riding a bicycle like backwards with your arms switched over you know what i mean like it does nothing makes sense and the things that you normally think it's going to do it, do it doesn't do so that makes this bike insane now let's assume that maybe that rating is a little bit high or that that rating is just on the dyno and it's actually like 15 percent less so let's just let's let's say conservatively it might be 255 horsepower. Still incredibly powerful and puts it pretty much on par with my Turbo Road King, which I'm pretty sure would make this bike the most powerful Orange County chopper they've ever made. Actually, possibly the most powerful chopper I've, I've ever heard of, anyone's ever made. I, uh, what was I, I was hoping for big numbers. Like? 190. Someone told us 190 something. But I was, ex so, I was expecting. So reality is not though, very much. You got 144 <coughs> cubic inch motor. We can take that, we can pretty much take that blower off and get the same amount of power. I don't think you would. No? You know what, even, and, and to go back to what was said in the first video that we, we that you talked about was why would you have a high compression motor we know that this is a high compression motor right uh why would you have a high compression motor with a bunch of boost in it right uh so so you're 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 you guys are probably right that thing's probably only pushing one to two maybe three pounds of boost at the end of the day it's it's like i've told you before this is a it's a work of art just, it really it's a, so it's, it off 
Show it off. It's like Mona Lisa. She ain't very pretty to look at, but everybody loves to look at her, right? <laughs> so we decided to show it off. Well, let's go ride it. So everyone pretty much said the same thing about this bike. The bike was never finished. It just, it just wasn't, it was never wrapped up. Always had starter issues. It always had throttle body issues. There was always something, there was always some gremlin about this motorcycle that made it just not done. And if it was ever ridden, people would have realized that, but it never, it was just, it was never, it was never really used. And part of the problem was there was too many hands in the fire. It went from him and went from him to him to him. And his job was this and his job was this. And no one really had any incentive to actually wrap it up and finish the job. And this drove Steven Thompson nuts because he had built a business building quality motorcycles, building quality supercharged kits, modified, you know, it was all, it was, it was quality above everything because that was his reputation. So he actually requested to, um, to Orange County Chopper, said, pay me this, pay me, pay me my hourly rate and let me dial this bike in. Let me fix this, 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 and this. It's got a lot of problems. I will fix it. Just pay me to fix it. But it, they weren't, they had no interest. It, it didn't matter to them because they got paid for it. It did what it, it did. It did what they wanted it to do. All the bike was needed for was to push around the shows and start up and hear the whistle and show how cool it is and show that it runs. Maybe at best, someone was stupid enough to hop on it, put it in gear and drive it into the trailer. That was it. That was all the bike was ever meant to do. It was never meant to go more than 15 miles an hour at the most. It was actually so bad that when Thompson actually put it on the dyno, that early on, when, it was so bad that actually early on when Thompson put it on the dyno, just to do some mild tuning and make sure it's, it's running right. The engine shifted over a little bit because the mounts, because the, because the motor mounts were, were, were goofed up somehow. And the back hub started tweaking and w walking away, which is why I'm slightly concerned about riding this motorcycle. Not because I can't handle the power, I can handle the power. I've, I've ridden much faster bikes. Can a bike that was never finished and basically meant to be a work of art, and that handle staying together, st staying a bike, and can they handle doing big boy motorcycle things? <laughs> That's the scary question. Now, I cannot wait to ride this motorcycle. This is gonna be fun. Kickstand it. <laughs> <laughs> I see some big, I need some open straightaways. After we all got a chance to take it for a little stroll in the parking lot just to check it off our bucket list and it didn't explode, I was ready to take it for a real test drive. But not without my helmet and not without my M1 Moto gloves lined with Kevlar. The only protection that I use. Yeah, we know you have four kids. So one of the cool features about the Insta Ace Pro is how it's super easy to move the camera around to all the different places that you want to film with this magnetic mounting system, which is way easier than the GoPros. You just unclip it and clip back in, and then you can also lock it so it doesn't come out. And the flip-up screen lets you see exactly what you're filming, which is great for me because I get to see what I look like when I'm riding my Orange County Chopper.
stopped accelerating on the highway. The throttle position sensor screw backed out and fell off the bike, which is why the throttle felt so weird when I first started riding, and why it had no throttle at higher RPMs. But I'm not gonna give up yet. So we went to the hardware store to buy another screw, and then took the bike back to the shop to install it and fill it with gas, because apparently it only gets three miles per tank, and replace a battery because we realized that the charging system didn't work. Another aspect of this bike that probably never worked. There we go. What do they got inside there? Good ones are like 2,000 or more. Edible. Yeah. Run out of gas? I don't know. I don't know. It just died. It was it was spitting and sputtering at that at that stoplight. It sounded like it was running out of gas again. There's no way. There's no way it ran out of gas. No, it's got gas. It just shut off completely. It was yeah. spitting and sputtering at that. You could tell I was revving it up because I was trying to keep it running because I was idling down too much. And then I tried to get to the intersection. It was like, nope. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> Love it. Best bike I ever owned. Most reliable. Most definitely the most reliable for sure. Get you to point A. Point A. And all this Orange County Chopper breakdowns reminds me of one of my favorite Bible verses. Ephesians 4, 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. We'll see you guys next time. But uh, I'm serious. I got, like, I'm filming right now with, with the uh, Insta Ace Pro. I do like the camera. If you guys are interested in checking it out, um, the first 20 people who go to this link in the description will get 10% off of your Insta Ace Pro. Also, the motorcycles from the auction just came in. And Craig's on his way here right now. We're gonna get this thing running. That's coming up next. Thank you for calling the Geico Motorcycle and RV Division. Your call may be recorded for quality purposes. Call might be recorded for entertainment purposes. How can I help you today? Motorcycle insurance. Geico bike. You're calling about motorcycle insurance, right? Yes. You're calling about motorcycle insurance, right? Right. Okay, are you calling about an existing motorcycle policy? No. Thank you for calling Geico Cells. My name How can I help you? I'm trying to put, uh, I'm going to get a quote for motorcycle insurance for a motorcycle. <clears throat> Zero nine two zero. All right, so let me actually read back the VIN number to make sure I heard you right. What kind of motorcycle is this? Oh, this is the Geico bike. This is the Orange County, Orange County Chopper Geico bike. All right, one second here. Alright, give me one second. I just need to put you on a great total, okay? Okay, is there, there's not a, is there a problem? Oh, can you tell me what year it is? There's not a problem, it's just that it's not populating okay. as a uh, year, make, and model of a bike. Usually that's only going to be because it's going to be a brand new bike. Is this bike like a kit bike? No, no, this is, this is the Miss Geico Racing Orange County Chopper from the TV show. Give me a second, I'll be right back. Okay, cool.
$1,731.89. And that's what the full coverage we discussed. So did you want to go ahead and do that or do you want to do a lower plan? Let me, uh, let me think about it a little bit and I'll get back to you guys. Cool, thank you. Looks like they will insure it. Okay, go back. 